All right, welcome to a beginner video on how to interpret your Nmap scans, right? In some previous videos, we both covered how to run some initial Nmap scans, full Nmap scans, TCP, things like that. And we also covered the common ports to help you understand, okay, this is what this port number corresponds to, what kind of service, what kind of server you're dealing with here. But I definitely feel that one of the issues that a lot of people are going to run into once they have gone this far is that they're going to get a lot of results back from their scans, but they're not going to be sure where to go from there, right? Like what should I prioritize? And rather than giving you some general rules of what to prioritize, we're going to look at a number of the Nmap scans that I've already done and saved on my computer from previous CTFs I've done in, from Hack the Box and things like that. And I would just, I'm just going to go through each example and tell you when I see this output, this is what I'm thinking and this is what I would prioritize. So hopefully through these examples, it can help you better understand uh, when you are in a similar situation, okay, what should I be prioritizing here? What should I be looking at? And a lot of these cases, you're going to notice it is pretty straightforward. On some of the easier boxes, it will be. But if you're going for OSCP and things like that, there could be a lot of rabbit holes and a lot of things that you just need to go through and enumerate. So this should be very helpful. What's up, guys? Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, we're going to start off. I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus here, a little bit of some Linux magic to actually get these scans in one place where we can easily view them in the first place. So I'm going to run the locate command, and I always name my initial scans short, so it'll be short.nmap. Oops. Run that, and this will give me all of the nmap short.nmap scans on my system. We have quite a bit here, as you see. And uh, in this case, we have the full pass. Perfect, right? So what I want to do, I want to save this to a file. We'll call it scans. And so that's taking the output, redirecting it into a file. So now I have a file called scans, right, with all these. And I'm just going to run it through a for loop. So I'm going to say for scan and scans, right, do... We're going to do less on each file. So less scan done. All right. So here we go. Let's get right into it. This first one here, we got FTP, Telnet, and a web server. So from our Nmap scripts, we also see we have anonymous FTP login. I would start there. So I would just see what's in this FTP server. I would do... Uh, FTP, login with a username anonymous and password anonymous. And I'll just get a lay of the land. What's there? Do we have the ability to upload files there? Are there any interesting files there that we can grab? And then after that, I would look into the port 80, the web, uh, the web server here. Telnet might also be interesting, but technically that's going to require some credentials. That's what I'm thinking there. <clears throat> On this next box... And I'm not really sure which box is which based off these scans, but that's not really relevant anyways. On this next one, pretty simple, 22 and 80. 22, you're pretty much always going to have to have credentials. And so I would start with the web server there, maybe run a Go Buster and try to find some interesting directories. Pretty straightforward. So Go Buster, by the way, that's just a, uh, a tool for directory brute forcing subdirectories, right? So what I mean by that is, say you go to a web page and you're on the home page and it's called, I don't know, slash index.html, or maybe you just see a slash, right? There might be some interesting folders, you know, on that page, like maybe slash admin or I don't know, slash images that might have some useful data or slash uploads, you know? And so it's just going to run a word list against all kinds of different potential directories that might exist on the server and it'll tell you when it got a hit on any of them. So then you can go and look into those directories and see if there's anything interesting there. So that's pretty much a very standard thing that I do against pretty much every web server I encounter. And don't worry, I'll be covering that in a future beginner video as well. Now, on this server here, looks like we have some Windows stuff here, Windows RPC. 
This one's a bit interesting. I'm not sure FMTP. I would have to look into that one. It's not too common of a port. So this, yeah, this one would definitely be interesting. I'd be thinking, hey, let's make sure we get that full scan running. There might be something else. But I would just maybe do a net cat on some of these ports. If you're ever dealing with an unknown port, you're not sure what it does, first, uh, try, just try to net cat to it. Net cat the server IP address. So this IP address and then port 8500. Just see what it returns, right? And then from there, just Google search what the service is and you can maybe learn a little bit more about it. Maybe it's expecting you to connect with some client of a different sort or whatever. Maybe it's a web server, who knows, right? So start investigating it that way. And then this one's straightforward. You only have port 80, so you do that. Nmap scan messed up on that one. On this one, SMB, very interesting. I would start running SMB enumeration commands because it doesn't look like we have any web server going. Maybe there's a web server running on a higher port. So definitely when we look at our full scan, that might be something we find. But just off of this information here, I would start out by enumerating SMB. And we'll be covering that, of course, in a future beginner video. Don't you worry. There's a lot of simple command line tools you can use to see if you maybe have right access to a share or things like that. Well, and in some cases, you can even get code execution because they're running an old version of SMB. However, this is 2016, so that is kind of unlikely. But it could be 2008, so there'll be further enumeration needed to really determine that in this case. Now, with this one here, we have port 80. So definitely I would check out the web server and 443. So we got a lot, we got a lot going on in this one. Let's be honest. And we have this mini serif. Now, actually, this is where I would start looking at all. The, I would start here. And the reason that I say that is I am familiar with this webmin, uh, this webmin platform here, and it's been vulnerable to some serious, uh, vulnerabilities. I believe some code execution, if I'm not mistaken. So actually I would look into just search exploit webmin finding an exploit and trying that out if it's uh because we even have from the banner we know the exact version that is really uh helpful information so i would look for any kind of exploits that will be valid for this version of mini serve and then from there we would probably get a shell if not then we could always look into some of these other web servers and even smtp to figure out we have the verify command available so we can actually determine users on the underlying Linux server. And this is a Linux server. We can tell because of 22, it's most likely a Linux server, not guaranteed, but yeah, because we have verify, we can determine uh, if a user exists on the server or not. So a lot going on, but that's definitely where I would start. This one, I would say... There's some interesting ports here. We can maybe netcat and try to determine if anything's interesting going on. But where I would start wouldn't be there. I would start with SMB and just trying to enumerate stuff off that. What access do I have? Do I have read access? Maybe I can read an interesting file. Do I have write access? Maybe I could upload something. Uh, I would, yeah, I would just start with SMB enumeration. Of course, while I have my full scan going, maybe there's something on the higher ports, of course. Never rule that out. Always run full scans as I showed in the previous video. Now, this one is straightforward. Enumerate port 80, enumerate port 80. Uh, that one didn't complete. Uh, this one, anonymous FTP is allowed. I would check that out first. And then I would check out these both of these web servers here on port 80 and port 8080. You can't really tell too much that's going on from the banners here of what these are. So I would run GoBuster scans against both of these to find some interesting subdirectories if they exist. And then here, I would start with the anonymous FTP, and then I would look into the web server afterwards. So a lot of these are pretty straightforward. You might be noticing a pattern here. If you are, I really hope this is helping you. Uh, now this one, this is a web server, this uh, G unicorn or gunicorn. I don't know how you say that, but this one, it gives you once again, anytime you can get from an Nmap scan a specific version number of something, I would immediately take to search exploit and look up this uh, application here and see if there's a known exploit for this version of it. Very quick and simple to do. That's where I would start. And since there's nothing else really going on, 
It's pretty much the only option you have unless there's some something from a full scan. And then here, I would say look into port 80, but also you got DNS, so maybe look into doing a zone transfer. Usually DNS is running on UDP. The fact that you found it on TCP is a good indication, not always, but chances are you might be able to do a zone transfer. So that'll be something we'll cover in a future video, of course, but I would be thinking about DNS zone transfers. I'd be thinking about looking into the HTTPS version of the site, and I'd be thinking about looking into some SMB enumeration. In this one, I would be thinking, what's going on with this web server here on this port, this uh, 9999, and uh, you know, also SMB enumeration. And then here, I think this is the same box. So yeah, same thing for this. And then port 80. And then I would be looking at, okay, VSFTPD. I know traditionally this has been vulnerable to a backdoor code execution vulnerability. Uh, I'm not sure about this specific version, however. So I would take the search exploit and make sure this this version is vulnerable to it. And I would try that exploit first if it is. If not, we do have anonymous login, so I would try that next and see what information we could glean there. Do we have read access, write access? What's the case? And then I would look into this web server and then this web server. And then here I would, I would start by looking into port 80 and then I would look into SMB. And then here, port 80, and then I would look into port 3000 as well. There's a web server running there. The way I know this is because HTTP, plus I know Node.js. And I would look into the web server here, and maybe some RPC info commands, just to see if we can get any information on that in addition. And then here, pretty much same deal. Port 80, I would check out the anonymous FTP, and then I would look into SMB. And then here, we have RDP running, remember 3389, remote desktop. I would look into the SMB stuff first, especially because this thinks that it's Windows XP. <laughs> and then I would look into, <clears throat> if I can find some credentials maybe, I could log into RDP an RDP session. I mean, it might be worth it to try a to to brute force this as well, maybe. But you could lock things out, so you got to be careful with that. But I would first try to see if I can get access to the box and maybe leverage that to turn it into an RDP session, which is always nice. And then here, anonymous FTP. I would start there. And the verify command on email so we can potentially verify uh, usernames on the system. Maybe do some zone transfers. A lot going on with this box. Look into the web servers oh, early on, always. And other than that, yeah, a whole lot going on here. There's another FTP. You get the version number, so search, search exploit for this. Definitely, definitely. My SQL, man, there's a lot going on with this box. You know what, actually... I think this might be metasploitable or something. So yeah, this has a ton of stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is metasploitable. I recognize this. So literally this box has like a million ways to root it. <laughs> so this one is like, hey, choose what you want to choose. FTP is always a good option. Web servers, uh, MySQL, VNC, literally everything here. And there's any, there's endless opportunities to root this box. This one, I would start with the anonymous FTP, then look into the web server. Oh, and then SMB as well, I saw. Port 80, port 80, port 80, port 80. Yeah, port 80 is a high priority always for the web server. So hopefully you guys recognize some patterns. This is a long video, but I really wanted to give you guys a ton of data here so you can really just see how much of a pattern this stuff is. And hopefully this really helps you when you are looking at the results of your Nmap scan. I know in the beginning you get all this data and you don't know what it means, what to do with it really. 
So that was the goal with this video. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you gain value, you watch all the way to this point, almost 15 minutes in, and hit the like button as well to help get this message out there. Help the other beginners out, and we'll elevate our skills in pen testing together. And if you're interested in learning more, you're a beginner, but you want to keep on charging forward, check out the playlist on screen right now, uh, the beginner playlist. And I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.